He's been a powerful uh, community leader, and he's been a real inspiration to you know all uh, of us high schoolers who uh, are interested in politics. So please get up for Ro Khanna. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me. It's great uh, to be here. I'm uh, going to be, have to be a little bit brief because I actually teach uh, right up down the street at Stanford in the economics department. My class there starts at 4.30, so I don't want to keep my students waiting. But I uh, really am impressed that uh, you're doing a TEDx uh, in high school. I mean, that's uh, uh, almost unheard of that uh, you have the, that kind of a vision uh, and inspiration to be able to pull something like that together. Uh, certainly a long way from uh, when I was in high school. Uh, you guys are far smarter, wiser, uh, and more in touch with uh, what's happening in the world. Let me talk about very briefly uh, three basic trends that are taking place in our country. Uh, one is globalization. So uh, at a time where uh, people who are able to reach out to other parts of the world, uh, go and do business or sell into China and India and Brazil, uh, are doing extraordinarily well. And other folks are feeling left behind if they're not part of that global economy. The second is automation. Uh, people who are, again, uh, adept at technology and machinery and computers are doing really well because they're taking advantage and working at places like Google or Facebook or Intel uh, or starting companies like that. And then those who don't have that digital literacy uh, are being left behind. Let me give you a staggering statistic. In California, there are over 3 million uh, Latino uh, students. Can anyone guess what number of Latino students of the 3 million end up doing uh, AP uh, computer science in a given year? Any guesses? 1%. Uh, I wish it were 1%. 314. 314 students uh, take the exam, only 170 or so pass in the entire state of California. That's the type of disparity. I mean, sometimes being at Homestead, uh, it's easy to uh, feel like everyone is part of this new innovation economy, doing TEDx talks, going and off. I know someone I met coming in is going to USC, and you're all going to go to different great schools and colleges. But there is a whole group of people who are being left behind, left behind from the globalization trends, left behind from automation and technology, left behind in not being able to afford to live in the area. You know, the Sunnyville, it costs almost $100,000 for a household median income to be able to afford a two-bedroom apartment. You know, that's crazy in terms of if, if, if you've lived in other parts of the country. Uh, you know, the median income in the United States is probably forty dollars to $45,000. So you have this sense of a growing income inequality, where those of us who get to teach at Stanford or go to Homestead uh, or go to school are going to do really, really well, uh, but a lot of folks are being left behind. And one of the reasons that this anxiety, or one of the causes of this anxiety, is a national politics that has started to look for scapegoats blame immigrants for the problems of the declining middle class, blame China, blame trade, blame Mexico. You know, our presidential candidates have really been inflaming people's anger uh, because of some of these structural changes. My hope, my belief is that all of you as future leaders, uh, certainly this community of Silicon Valley, of this country, need to care and engage about how we get more people the opportunities that all of you have. So that folks who grow up maybe in East Palo Alto or Oakland or East San Jose also can participate in this new economy. Also can have the opportunity to go to college, can go have the opportunity to be part of uh, the global economy. Because if we don't do that, we're gonna really create two different Americas. 
in America for those who have the privilege of going to grade school, and in America for those uh, who are left behind. There are three concrete things that I think we need to really focus on. First is universal preschool education. The studies show that by the age of five, a person's vocabulary actually can predict the likelihood of going to college by the age of five. A person who has a vocabulary of about 1,100 words, statistically almost 80% likely to go to college. A person who has a vocabulary of less, the kid, less than 500 words, and the odds are stacked against them. So very, before you even get into school, the upbringing you have with your parents uh, is so significant. And can anyone guess what the biggest predictor of whether a kid reads uh, or has that vocabulary, what the biggest predictor of that is? Is it class? Is it race? Is it money? But preschool in part, but yes. But any other guesses? Yeah. Location. Location has a lot to do with it, certainly. But the biggest predictor actually is the parents' educational uh, uh, attainment. So kids are born with parents who are educated. Doesn't matter if they're rich or poor, but the higher the education of parents, the more likely a young person's vocabulary is going to be uh, very good by the age of five. So the biggest lottery you can win, other than being born American, which I think is you know, winning the global lottery, the biggest lottery you can win is having parents that are rich, but parents who are highly educated, or educated, or have some form of education. So one of the things we have to do, because not everyone has that opportunity, is to figure out how do we have community schools till the age of five, which include uh, education, not just for the kids, but also uh, nutrition and health, education and involvement for the parents. Sometimes we're working two to three jobs, so people aren't, these young folks don't start out with a huge opportunity gap. You know, the amount of time, as great a high school as Homestead is, the amount of time a young person uh, spends in school is only 10%. 90% of time is actually at home. You know, sleeping, a lot part of it, or uh, up with your parents or with your friends. So the school can only do so much. We really have to make sure that uh, people have the right type of values in education right from the beginning. The second thing is, of course, funding K through 12 education, not just uh, here at Homestead, but across the district. Uh, there is an initiative that President Obama put forward that I, I don't know if you saw in the papers today, Zuckerberg and Sandberg and all are calling for, which is to have uh, computer science uh, classes throughout public schools across this country as mandatory uh, and starting in sixth grade so that people here graduate with digital literacy. I assume many of you have had that. At Homestead, I'm sure a lot of you have that opportunity to have some form of coding or computer literacy. How many people have that option of taking a class like that? How many had it in junior high? Well, even, even here, you know, it's not a full option. But certainly, we need to create that option uh, for people around the country. It's not a very boring world if all of you went and became computer programmers. I certainly am not saying that. But even if you want to be artists, or poets, or lawyers, or politicians, Whatever you want to do, you're going to need a digital literacy, just like we need a literacy in biology, and a literacy in math, and a literacy in history. And we need to make sure we have that opportunity. We also need to make sure we're funding music, and art, and drama in schools, because people need to be creative, and think, and adapt. And we shouldn't be shortchanging the liberal arts education. The final thing we need to do is make college affordable. How many folks here are concerned about the cost of higher education? Every hand should go up, unless you're you know, born very rich. I mean, I, let me give you an example. I worked for the President of the United States. This is Deputy Assistant Secretary of Commerce. I teach at Stanford. I've worked at a power, Wilson Sonsini, which is one of the top law firms in the area. And I'm still paying off student loans. I'm almost going to be 40 in, in September. President Obama was paying off his student loans two years before he became president. In fact, he was signing dreams from my father uh, when he was a candidate saying, thank you for paying for my kids' college education, because that's really the book that allowed him to pay off his student loans. 
Think about all those people who don't have those type of opportunities. The average young person is graduating with $27,000 of debt after four years. I have said that we need to make college tuition free uh, and have people pay it back afterwards for 10 years. It's Robert Wright's proposal. The way it would work is you go to college, one of the UCs or at state schools for free. If you want to go to a private university like Santa Clara or Stanford, you could take that credit and apply it to Stanford or Santa Clara. And then you pay it back for 10 years based on what job you have. If you go to Facebook or Google and make a larger income, you pay 10% of that income, a little bit more. If you happen to be a nurse or a teacher, you pay 10% of that income. So you're not uh, paying quite as much. But you pay it back in 10 years so you don't have the staggering debt that lasts for 15, 20 years and that forces young people to go into finance or to go into careers to pay back loans that they may not actually want to do as their passion. Making college accessible, affordable, and not having student debt is, in my judgment, one of the biggest challenges for our country. Let me end with this uh, and uh, then leave you to the next speakers. We need more young people to care about the political process. You guys are, like I said, so passionate, so bright, so civically engaged to be doing a TEDx talk, to stay here for a TEDx talk. I don't know if I would have done that in high school. So you're already one step ahead of the curve. But we don't have enough young people who care about politics. Some folks are turned off by the tone of our politics. People feel like they can't make a difference in politics. People feel like they rather pursue uh, other career choices. But the reality is that American politics still makes a huge difference.